Well, I hope that you're ready. Are you ready? Are you ready, ready, ready <laughs> um, to receive the Word of God? It's, uh, it's, we're going to start a series next week um, on the 40 days. It's called 40 Days uh, in the Word. And um, so what we're going to do is just going to spend six weeks, 40 days, looking at why the Bible is important to us and, uh, and how to study it and, uh, and, and all the aspects with it. So <clears throat> this week is basically really for me just to introduce it and to, uh, and to help you to, uh, to understand why we are doing what we are doing. The goal is so that you will love the Word of God that you would live the Word of God and that you would learn all about the Word of God. So there are four key components to our series coming up. And the first component is the sermons component. Com, com, compo, component. There we go. At least you're listening. Eh? Um, so that's the first thing, which, of course, we do every Sunday. So if you want to be part of that, then you need to turn up on a... Uh, Sunday, there is a small group component, uh, which you'll need to be part of a small group, and if you're not part of a small group, you could always, I guess, start your own small group, if you've got two or three friends, then away you go, and, um, and there is a devotional component uh, to it, and there is a scripture memory component to it, and so that's what we're going to do over the next six weeks, so we start next week. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the inspiration of the Bible. In other words, how can I trust the Bible? How do I know that it is true? And then the second week, we're going to look at the foundation of the Bible. In other words, what's the purpose of the Bible? What's the, what's the macro uh, purpose of, of the Word of God? Why is it important to us? What's the big picture? What's the overarching themes of the Word of God? You see, because the Bible is made up of actually of 66 books. So the Bible is actually a library of books in one book. And uh, so it's important for us to, to look at that. Week three, we were looking at the illumination of the Bible. In other words, how does God illuminate our mind through it? How does he uh, enable us to see things that we haven't seen before. How are we able to reflect on that? And so that's what God uh, does, uh, does through the Word of God as we read it and we come to it uh, in the right way. So I don't know if uh, maybe of you that have been Christians for a long time, you, maybe you read the, read the Bible through. Uh, for many of us, we read the Bible through each, each year. Um, and some, some do daily devotions and do it in different ways. But what you'll find is you, one year, uh, one day you will look at a scripture that you've maybe read many times before, but suddenly it says something powerful to you. It means something different to you, doesn't it? Or, um, you know, it illuminates to us. And, uh, and sometimes that happens through other people sharing the word uh, of God to us. So the fourth uh, week we will look at interpretation. How do we know what a verse in the Bible means? Yes, and I don't know if you've ever heard, sometimes people say, oh, well, that's your interpretation, as if, like, you can all have your own inter interpretation of it. But actually, there are some principles to interpret the Bible so that we understand what it's about, why it does, because there's lots of different types of material uh, in the Bible, and so we need to approach it from certain principles. They are so important because there's a correct way to interpret the Bible and then there's an incorrect way of interpre interpreting uh, the Bible. So if you interpret it in a wrong way, of course, you end up with all sorts of wacky ideas and that's where cults come from and all sorts of things. So it's important that we understand how to read the Bible, how to, um, to, to interpret it in a in a proper way. The fifth week is we will be looking at the integration of the Bible. In other words, how does the Bible work in my life? How does the Bible work in my life in my family? How does it work in my workplace? How does it work in my college or university? How can I actually uh, integrate the Bible into my life on a daily basis? Because it does affect 
every area of our life. And then the final week, we will look at the application of the Bible. In other words, how to use the Bible in specific ways. In other words, how to make good decisions, how to overcome temptation, how to offer uh, uh, advice to a friend using the Word of God, or how to find comfort for yourself. So we will look at that in the, uh, the, uh, the sixth week. So it's going to be an exciting week. Uh, every Sunday is going to be exciting. You don't think now you have no chance later. Uh, so there's going to be a number of elements. So obviously we've talked about the, the first element, which is the Sunday side of it. But there's also going to be a 40-day devotional. And uh, if you're part of a connect group, then you will get WhatsApp to you, a link for every day that there will be a video link. Uh, some of them will be Rick Warren and he's arranged uh, different uh, teachers just to kind of give a short five-minute um, video devotional each day. So you will get that um, in your WhatsApp or inbox, uh, and Tracy will, uh, will sort that to make sure that every Connect group uh, gets that. Uh, but then, of course, there is a third element, and that is that there is going to be some small group studies. So in your small groups, you are going to look at uh, a different part of the Bible each week, and, um, and so that's being done on a video, and again, access to that is done through our link, we have a link on YouTube, so that each Connect Group leader uh, will have that link, and, um, and so that you'll be able to, to, to watch it in your small group and walk it, uh, and walk it through, and so he will be doing that. Now, in order to be able to do that, some of the stuff is we have a workbook uh, which you will receive in your small group. It's the only way to receive the small, the, to receive this workbook, is to be a part of a small group. Now, do you think I'm trying to incent incentivize you to be a part of a small group? Yes, because we see small groups as absolutely essential to your growth as a Christian, and I'll mention some of that as we grow, but uh, as we go, um, but we want to grow with the word, of course. Um, and so this really has a number of aspects to it, really uh, does. It will have um, aspects to, for you to be able to go through on a daily basis. It has your small group, so you can take notes. Um, all sorts of different helps uh, are in there, and uh, you will really find it very useful. It even has 20 essential memory verses to learn. Um, that, are, that are additional to the ones that we will do. We will have a, uh, each one of you will receive a key ring and um, on it we, each week we will give you a little uh, tag which will have a short memory verse on, okay? It's short for my benefit, okay? Um, but it's nice and short. So, um, for example, week one is let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Colossians chapter Three and verse sixteen. So, if you can remember John three sixteen, just think of Colossians three sixteen, and you're aware that you go. Amen. So each week you will do that. You'll memorize it. We will memorize it and go through it on a Sunday. Um, so each Sunday we will we will have uh, little ways of trying to remember that. Then in your connect group, and then as you go, you can keep that in your pocket. You can bring it out uh, and check it and learn the Word of God is so important. Uh, for us. Amen. So there's all sorts of things in there, lots of helps and, um, and things, so it will really, um, really be powerful uh, to, to get hold of that. But also, one of the things we do have at the back, we bought a, a small number, we weren't sure on the take-up, um, but uh, what we did is we bought uh, some of these, which are Rick Warren's book on how to interpret the Bible, and he gives uh, 12 uh, 12 methods of interpreting the Bible. It depends on the way that you can study the Bible. Uh, and so that's really interesting uh, to be able to do it. So, for example, he does chapter summary method, character quality method, thematic method, biographical method, topical method, word study method, a book background method, Bible survey, chapter analysis, book synthesis, and verse-by-verse -verse, um, analysis. So 12 different methods, really worth uh, every penny for it, um, you'll be able to go to the connect point, point at the back there uh, to purchase one if you, uh, if you want to add to it and uh, you really want to grow uh, way beyond, uh, beyond this. There are lots of books that are, help with interpretation 
and, um, and so it's not the only one, of course, uh, but it is a good one, and, uh, and so we recommend it uh, to you because obviously it goes quite nicely with the, with the series as well. Uh, if we run out at the end, of course, we will order more uh, for you. Okay, so that's, uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to uh, uh, teach you um, in our connect groups, we're going to teach you um, some simple methods for just getting the Word of God uh, into your life, on meditating in the work uh, of God. So it's, it's important to do us, and, um, and hopefully you will really engage with that. Now Jesus, when he was, uh, had preached the Sermon on the Mount, which is his most famous sermon, um, at the end of his sermon he tells a story, he tells a, a parable, and, um, and he says that two guys go out and that they built a home. So they both go out to build a home. One builds it on solid rock, and the other builds his house on sand. In other words, the foundation for one is, they can be both identical houses, but one is built on rock, and one is built on sand. And we know Jesus then says that the winds come, the storms come, the rains come, the floods come, um, and, uh, and as a result of that, the house that's on sand is, uh, is washed away, it's destroyed, it cannot stay because of that. But the, the house that's built on rock is standing firm. And, uh, and that's so important for us to understand because we want our life to be built on a solid foundation, on something that's going to last, something that's strong, something that we can trust in, that when the storms of life, when the troubles of life, when the trials of life, when the temptations of life, when the tribulations of life, when the things and the difficulties and the dead ends of life come, we have something solid to base our life on. That's why the Word of God is so essential to get into our life and, uh, and because it helps us to grow, but it helps us to have a strong foundation. And Jesus says this in Matthew 7 and verse 24, uh, he, uh, after this, he says, everyone who hears these words of mine, in other words, it's talking about the Bible, he puts them into practice. He's like that wise man who built his house on the rock. So it's important to realize that when we build our life on the words of Jesus, we're building on the rock. And we are going to have difficulties. Now, I don't know what is going to happen in the, for the rest of 2023 or 2024 or whatever. But I do know this, that there are going to be difficulties. There are going to be storms. There are going to be issues in, our, in your life and in my life that, that actually are going to rock us. It's like the wind and the waves and the storm and the floods are going to come and we're going to, in some way or other, and so it's going to be on how we are based in the Word of God, is our foundation secure as to how we can go through those. I've seen people, um, and, uh, and, and, and they seem to be strong, they, things, well, everything's are going right, but once something happens, that's when you see the trueness of what is in a person, isn't it? I think that's really important that we understand that. So I'll give you an example. Um, <clears throat> uh, when, I'm going up uh, the, uh, this week, uh, Kath and I, to a, a funeral of a guy um, called Tommy that was in the church when we pastored up there. Uh, he was a tailor by trade, great guy. But we went for a day out with him and his wife, and, and, um, and we got to this point on this island where it started to throw it down. I mean, pelt it down, yes? So I said, right, let's go to these rocks over here on the beach. And so I hid and cowered behind these, uh, these rocks, you know. And Tommy went, come on, we can't just stay here. We've got things to do. So in other words, when what was in me was a coward, but what was in Tommy was uh, a strength. He was willing to get on, and so we all followed Tommy. So there you go. He was the leader of the day because he had the courage of the day. It's what's in you comes out, amen? And, uh, <coughs> but it doesn't come out until the storm, until the rain comes Till the difficulties of our life uh, uh, happens upon us. So it's important that we don't build our life on the opinion of others. 
what other people think or what culture says or what's on TV or on social media. It's important that we build our life on a foundation that is true. It was true a thousand years ago and it'll be true in a thousand years. In, a, in another thousand years' time. In other words, it's truth. And when we have our lives based on something like that that's not changing, it doesn't change, then we know we can go through the storms. And so I just want to look at James chapter 1, verses 19 to 25. So if you have a Bible, you might want to, uh, to turn with it. If you don't have a Bible, it's fine. The verses will come up on a screen behind us, and you should have them uh, on your notes if you have received notes uh, on the way in. And so it's important for us today to ask the question, how can we build our life on the Bible? Well, the answer is simple. Look at the way that God has made us. God has made us with, with, uh, with five senses. He's given us hearing, he's given us sight, he's given us smell, he's given us taste, and he's given us touch. He's given us the five senses in which to experience the world. We all experience the world through those five sense senses. So there's no, there's no exceptions that that's the way that we experience the world through those things uh, that, that we do. So when we encounter life, we, uh, we encounter life through our five senses. And that's what God uses in our life when he wants to build into our life, wants to build truth, and he wants the word of God uh, to go. So we we'll bring us to the first point, and the first point is that if we want to build our life on the Bible, we need to, first of all, receive it with our ears. In other words, it's got to, we've got to receive it, we've got to hear it, we've got to listen to it. So that's exactly what you are doing this morning. So this morning, whenever you listen to me, uh, up here, whether you're on, on the internet listening to another Bible teacher, you're on God TV or whatever it might be, if you're listening to the Word of God, you might do what, what I do uh, uh, is, uh, with the, with the um, Uversion app is you can listen to the Word of God or you can listen to devotions, those kind of things. That's the first way that God um, uh, talks to us. And we can hear God speak to us from that. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 says this, Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. So that's what's happening. Faith comes by hearing the message, and the message comes through the word of Christ. James chapter 1 and verse 19 says this, Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. In other words, the word of God saves us. The word of God saves us. If you don't hear the word of God, you can't be saved. It's only through hearing. That's why the Great Commission for us as Christians is go and tell. Go and share with those that do not know. They, they're not going to know just on their own. They might know that a God exists and they might know that God is a creator and they might be able to, to ascertain certain things, but without the message, they can't believe in Jesus Christ. <coughs> it talks there about accepting the word and humbly accept the word. Excuse me. Um, the Greek word there is dikomai, which literally is a hospitality term. In other words, it means to welcome in, to receive the word of God in. So when you welcome a stranger into your home, you're receiving them and uh, you're, you're welcoming them into your house. That's what we've got to do with the word of God. We've got to accept it into our life. And then it says the word planted in you. So often through scripture, the word of God is referred to as a seed. The seed of, of the word of God is planted into our hearts, into our lives. So the seed is the word of God and the soil is our hearts. And so 
when we receive the Word of God, so like now when you're hearing the Word of God, is, is you have the opportunity for that seed to go into your heart and to germinate, for you to feed it, for it to grow, for it to be watered, and for it to develop uh, from that. It has that opportunity, but of its own, it's not going to do that. In other words, when you get a seed, let's say I had a tomato seed. If I had a tomato seed, it would depend on where I planted that as to where as to what I would receive. If I planted in one area of fertile soil, I would get to lovely tomato plants and it would produce lots of tomatoes. I probably would put it in a greenhouse and they'd come out lovely and red and delicious. I could put it into another place and different soil and find that it's actually weak. It's not, it's not growing and it's not developing. It's not getting the sustenance or, uh, that, it, that it needs from it. It's maybe shallow. It's not able to get what it needs to do. And I could plant it in another place and it wouldn't even grow at all. In other words, there's nothing wrong with a seed. It's exactly the same seed, but it's the soil in which it, it, it goes in and that it's going to grow in that makes the difference. So the Word of God, the seed of the Word of God, is dependent on our receptivity to, uh, to receiving the Word of God. So that's why we've got to receive the Word of God. If I give you a present and you don't receive it, it's never going to impact into your into your life. So our hearts need to be prepared when we come for it. Just as the soil, when you're going to do gardening, you mulch it and you get the stones out and you clear it and you just can make sure there's no weeds there and you're, you're taking uh, uh, as much preparation as you can ready for the seed to go in. So we need to do the same to receive the Word of God. We need to get rid of the weeds and the stones and to, and to prepare the soil of our hearts ready for when we receive the Word of God. So what do I mean by that? I mean by that that when you come to church on a Sunday morning, just a practical way, that if you come and you have an argument on the way, or things don't work and it's raining and it's storming and the car doesn't start, or you get to the, the, to the car park and there's no spot for the car park, or you come in and you think to yourself, the greeters not greeted me as they ought to do, and you come in and you're, in, you're not in a receptive mood, are you? Yes, you're in a frustrated, you're in a, you're in a, 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 a your, your whole emotions are all working out there and you kind of think, so what happens when you're in that situation is you're not able to receive. So it's important that when we come to church, it's important when we come to the Word of God, whenever we're approaching the Word of God, we need to understand that our heart needs to be receptive. It needs to be prepared. It needs to be worked on. We need to say, is my heart right so that I can receive what I'm receiving? So in other words, this morning, you're all sat together. You're all hearing the same message. You can have two people sat by side by side. One person goes out and goes, wow, that was awesome. Jonathan hit it out of the pack. First time, but he hit it out of the pack. Somebody else comes out and they go to and they say, well, that was a waste of time. I don't get anything out of that. It was the same message, but it's the receptivity of the heart, and it's your heart, it's you. I can't make your heart receptive, yes? And God is not going to make your heart receptive. It's something that you do. You prepare the soil of your heart, amen? And so for good reception, to receive the Word of God well, then you must do some things which are in, in this passage in James you look at. And so the first thing you must do is to be Quiet. That's the first thing we need to be do. To hear God speak, James says there, be quick to listen and slow to speak. You can't hear God talking while you are talking. I don't know if you've ever been in, in conversations. I've been in the presence of some people where they can both have a conversation at the same time. And you think to yourself, I don't know how they're doing it because that one's talking and this one's talking and it's like, it's as if neither's listening to the other or how they're able to, maybe it must be a female thing of being able to multitask. <laughs> I'll give you that maybe. <laughs> but, uh, but us guys, we're linear, we're just anyway. Um, for all the, I've just offended all the ladies, there you go. <laughs> so um, so we, need to be, we need to be quiet, we need to, to, to come to it thing. The second thing we need to be is to be calm. It says, and slow 
to become angry. We don't hear much when we're angry and when we're upset. So you ladies, you're all upset now. You're not hearing a thing I'm saying. <laughs> you're on this kind of, do you know what it said? So you've not really moved on, yes? <laughs> so you've got to, got to realise that when we're irritated, when we're uptight, when we're angry, when we're upset, when we're frustrated, we're not in a receptive mood to be able to hear what is being said. But when you calm down, when you're in a, uh, you know, you, 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 things are arrested, you're able to hear what the other person is saying. And it's so true with the Word of God. It's when we come quietly and calmly to the Word of God that we start to hear Him. In other words, you can't come, God, five minutes I've got right now. I need to hear from you. And I've only got five minutes to spare, but I, so I just need you to be quick. That's not going to work because God is saying, I want your undivided attention, not thinking about what you've got to do after you've read the Word of God, after you've looked at the Word of God. He wants you to be still and know that I am God. One of the things that they've shown scientifically is that listening lowers your blood pressure. But speaking raises your blood pressure. So you know where my blood pressure is right now? <laughs> Up there. And all you guys listening, your, your blood pressure, you're doing, it, doing you good. Doing you good. Yes, just listening. So anyway, third thing uh, to be receptive is uh, we need to be clean. You can't have junk in your life or sin in your life and expect to hear God speak to you. This is what James says. He says, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent. In other words, before you put the seed in the ground, you do some weeding. You get rid of the things that need to be, whether they're stones, whether they're weeds, whatever they might be. And some weeds can be so, I, I don't know if, if you've done much gardening, but, um, but you can go into a garden and you can push a little, pull a little bush up, say, for example, um, and, its, and its roots can go for, it seems like, miles. That's an exaggeration, of course. I'm not, but 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 they go forever, and um, and so sometimes there are things in our life that need to be pulled out and can be majorly needed to be removed for us to hear the word of God in our life. So we've got to learn to break up the soil of our hearts, eliminate the rocks, pull out the weeds, and get the soil of our heart ready to receive the seed, the incorruptible. You know, word of the living God into our lives. And James says we need to get rid of two things, he says in this verse. Filth and evil. What's interesting is when he talks about the word filth, when he uses this word in the Greek, the Greek word means, can be used for earwax. That's, now, I mean, that's, okay, it's a bit gross, but there we go. He says, in other words, get rid of the earwax in your ears if you are to hear the word of God. So that, you know, earwax is not something that we kind of, we're always trying to kind of get rid of the earwax so we can hear well. And so that's, a, that's the point. The point is that James is trying to make uh, is that we can't hear God while ever there's junk in our life. While ever there's things in our life, we need to understand that all that that's going to do is plug our ears up and we're not going to hear what God has to say with us, to say to us, yeah? So in other words, you can't have your mind full of pornography. You can't have your mind full of resentment and bitterness or anger. You can't have in your mind, uh, the, you know, other things that are going to stop you because they're going to stop you hearing the word of God. So the question I hear you saying is, well, how do I get clean spiritually? Well, there is a biblical term. It is called confession. Confession is the way that we get clean, in our, in, uh, clean before God. And confession simply means agreeing with God. Confession literally means agreeing with God. Greek, the Greek word is homo logio. Homo, obviously we get homosexual, homogeneized milk. In other words, it just means same. Homo means some. The logio means to speak. So in other words, it's to speak the same. 
So confession means we speak the same as God. God says it's wrong, we say it's wrong. God says it's right, it's right. In other words, we agree with him, and when we agree with him and say, God, I got it wrong, we are in agreement with him, we are confessing, and so it's important to us that we've got to clean out the garbage in our life if we are to hear what, uh, what God wants to say to us. And the fourth thing we need is we need to be humble. James says, humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. A prideful heart will be a blocked heart, yes? When in other words we come and think, I know best. Or I'll hear what God wants to say and then I'll decide whether I'm going to do it or not. That is a prideful heart. That's saying that we know best. So hearing God's word is essential and it's the first base, as it were, for us to get the word of God into our life. But unfortunately, we so often forget about 95% of what we hear. So hence the reason having notes this morning. So you might remember some of the bits there, you can take them on. So the second way we build our life on the Bible is to read it with our eyes. So you cannot grow without reading the Bible. James says in verse 22, don't merely listen to the word. Yes, you ought to listen to the word, and that's good. He says, uh, but uh, uh, don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. In other words, because you're going to forget it. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. I don't know about you, but that happens a lot on a Sunday. <laughs> Hear the word? By the time you've got to the car park, Satan's taken that seed and it's, it's gone, has it not? And, uh, and disappeared. And so we forget often most of what we, we do here. It's important to hear to understand, but we don't remember um, a lot of it. So it's important for us to read it, yes? Uh, and that. So then Billy goes on, but... And here's the opposite to that. He says, the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, in other words, the Bible sets us free, and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Who wants to be blessed? If you want to be blessed, then you do what he says in this passage. God promises us to be blessed if we will um, he blesses our family, blesses our work, blesses every aspect of our life if we will do it. He says, the man who looks intently, in other words, reads the Bible um, uh, intently, and then he says, continues to do this. That's reviewing the Bible. And then he says, not forgetting what he's heard, that's remembering the Bible, but doing it, that is responding to the Bible. He will be blessed by what he does. So firstly, it says, the person who looks intently. And he's talking about reading the Bible. The Bible is compared to a mirror. So you can look at a mirror two ways. You can look at a mirror and you can either just glance in the mirror, you know, kind of just go and move on. Or you can look at the mirror and you look intently and you go, oh no. Oh, I need some makeup. <laughs> All I can say is if the house needs painting, paint it. Anyway. <laughs> But, but what I'm saying is we use the mirror for two things. Now, with the Word of God, you can either glance at the Word of God and just go, okay, I've got my, 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 my pennies worth there. I've just glanced at the Word of God. Uh, glancing is better than not looking at all, but the best way is to gaze into the Word of God, to actually spend some time reflecting on it and reading it and, uh, and looking through it. Did you know, an interesting fact, that the first Queen Elizabeth... She had, she lived at the, the time of Shakespeare, she had all the mirrors in her house removed as she, as she got older in Buckingham Palace. Not a mirror anywhere that she could see because she realized she was losing a beauty. She was putting makeup on um, and she was using makeup that had lead in it. Of course, in them days, they didn't realize how the lead would actually make the skin worse. So ladies, just be careful. Um, but so she had them all. So in other words, the mirrors, mirrors there for us to reflect, to evaluate ourselves, to see ourselves. And when we read the Bible, we're able to look at ourselves and see what the Bible sees in us and able to make a difference with that. 
And, uh, and so thirdly, we need to research it with our hands and with our mouth. This is basically Bible study. Researching is Bible study. Yes, there's two components to, to Bible study. The first one is you need a pen and pencil or you need to um, have some way of writing it down. And the second one is to discuss it, to chat about it, to talk about it, yes? So that's what turns it into study. That's why our small groups are so important. In our small groups, we're able to read it, we're able to, uh, to reflect on it, to, to, to listen to it, but we're also able to be able to kind of discuss it and say, look, this is what the Word of God is saying here. So this is why these next 40 days... Uh, we are wanting you to plug into a small group. Some of you may have stopped going to a connect group and we're just saying, we'd love you to start. In fact, let's rephrase that. God wants you to restart. God wants you in a small group. He's into small groups. Small groups is a big thing in God's agenda. And if you don't believe me, read the Bible. <laughs> because right from the beginning, God is into small groups. And... Uh, I won't digress, but I want to say to you, whether you're, it's in Moses, uh, he had to, to go in the small groups, groups of tens, of hundreds, and of thousands. He had the small group principle there. Jesus, in the, he had 12 disciples. Uh, and even within that, he had a Peter, James, and John. And the 12 was multiplied out to the 72, which is groups of 12. The 120 in the upper room, groups of 12. In other words, there is always, in God's economy, there's a small group. And we can't, we can't relate to a large group number of people. Now, I can talk to you and you listen to me, but there's no real interaction. You can't have a deep interview. We can't research it and look at the Word of God together, but we can in a small group where it's small enough to everybody participate, to see what they see, to respond to what they're hearing and that they're reading. And, and so God is able to work in that. It is paramount that we understand the Word of God in a community context. And God wants us to be in a small group community context. Amen. So that's important for us. So it, it's the John 5, verse 39, Jesus says this, You search the Scriptures because you believe they will give you eternal life, and the Scriptures point to me. So in other words, right from the Old Testament all the way, all the Scriptures, they point to who? To Jesus, absolutely. I hope you weren't going to say Jonathan. <laughs> in Acts 17, Luke talks about a group of people in a city called Berea. And Berea is a little city in Greece. And he says this, the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica, which is another city in, in uh, Greece. And they listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scriptures, that study, day after day to check up on Paul and Silas to see if they were really teaching the truth. These guys heard the word of God, heard what Paul was saying. They went home looked and read their, their, their Bible for themselves to see whether or not what Paul was saying was correct. And so they were able to read it, to study it, write it down, and they discussed it together as a group. Fourthly, the fourth principle is to build our life on the Bible is to review it and to remember it. And so, of course, we're going to do that uh, with our small groups, but there are obviously other in the, in the workbook that you can learn it would be absolutely brilliant. James chapter 1 and verse 25 says this, the man who looks intently, not forgetting what he's heard, in other words, that's remembering it, he will be blessed in what he does. Yes, in other words, if we think over it, over and over, we get a verse, we get, we get a passage, and we just think about that over and over again, that is what God wants us to do. It is probably one of the greatest habits that you will ever acquire is to remember the Word of God. You start memorizing the Word of God as a daily habit, it will help you, it will transform your life because you will have the Word of God with you. One of the things that I find in life is that when I need the Word of God, it's not with me. Do you know what I'm trying to say? You're in a place of where there's, the storm suddenly comes or there's a, there's a temptation or there's a difficulty. Or something just comes and you think, what are you going to do? And you think to yourself, okay, where, where's me? Oh, my Bible's still at home. What, what, what can I do? But if you've memorized it, you're taking it with you, aren't you? And when a temptation comes, you can just 
quote the scripture and say, no temptation uh, has come upon you except what is common to man. And just be able to re- re- go through, the, uh, the, through the, uh, the, the, what the Bible is because you've remembered it. If you don't bring it in, you can't bring it out. Amen? Now, the issue is, for a lot of us, is we often think, oh, I struggle with memorizing things. And I'm the same as you. Now, there are some people who are really good. There are some people who have photographic memories. Yes, uh, we're jealous of that, okay? But, but some people are, so we've got different deals, but wherever we are, whatever level we're on, we can develop it better. In other words, studying and memorizing scripture will actually help you mem- remember things in other areas of life. It actually develops your ability to memorize uh, things. Uh, so you know how bad my memory would be if I, did, <laughs> if I didn't read and memorize scripture. It is a skill that you can get good at. I want to say this to you. We always remember what's important to us. So, for example, the matches on the TV, you'll know who's playing, you know what time it starts, you know the, 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 who the managers are, you know, you, you know the team, you know who's in the team, you know, uh, you know who, you know, you, you, you don't... Why? Because it's a value. It's important. They, they, they want to know about that. You know, uh, for, for others, we, go, we just go to, who? Who? I haven't got a clue. Team? Leads of a team? So there you go. So it's important for us to understand that, that we are able to get the Word of God into us and, uh, and remember it. That Joshua 1 and verse 8 says, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. Yes, God is commanding us to meditate on the work of, word of God day and night. In other words, when you're eating, when you're sleeping, when you're drinking, when you're playing, when you're running, whatever you are doing is to have the word of God as part of your life to do it. And then it goes on to say this in Joshua 8. It says, so that you will be careful to do everything written in it. You remind you of it, you meditate on it so you can do what's right. Then you will be prosperous And successful. This is the only place in Scripture that promises prosperity and success. And it comes from meditating on the Word of God. Yes, it's the only promise of prosperity and success in the Bible is in this verse. So if you meditate on it, God's promised that you will be a success. And so that's what we're going to do in our small groups. We're going to just to study the Word of God. We're going to learn to meditate on the Word of God. And and fifthly, we're going to uh, learn how to respond to the Word of God. In other words, we're going to learn to do what it says. So James 1.22 says, Do not merely listen to the Word, and so do do deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Yes? So we've got to turn it into action. Now, the question is, how do we deceive ourselves? Well, how we deceive ourselves is like, for example, this morning, we listen to the word of God, so we think we've heard it, and then we go out and we think because we've heard it and we've understood it that we've got it. But actually, what God is saying here is, you can listen to a sermon, but if you don't remember it, if you don't receive it, if you don't uh, remember it, if you don't think about it, uh, and then you can do all that and and think, oh yeah, I've got the points memorized, Pastor. But if you then go on uh, to do and do nothing about it, it is a waste of time. It is, it is meaningless. In other words, you are wasting your time coming to church on a Sunday morning if you're not going to put into action what you hear God say to you. That is, that is the crux of it. That is how we get the word of God into our life is by applying it to our life. Amen? So it's important. So for in other words, I could teach you on how to build a balanced, financial, healthy life on, based on scriptural principles. And you might hear it and say, yes, great. But if you go out and you don't apply what's learned, it, to you, it's a waste of time. It's only what we apply that makes a difference. In other words, it's only the parts of the Bible that we do are the parts that we actually believe. Let's go back to where we started with Jesus when he 
uh, ended the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 24. He says this, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice occasionally, puts them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine, in other words, you come to church, you hear them, and then off you go, is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. I want to say to you, I don't want that to happen to you. That's why we're going through these 40 days in the world, because we, we do not want you to crash and to burn. But we want you to build a solid foundation. Yes. And although I do not know what storms are going to come in 2023 or 2024, I do know this, that storms will come. And it depends on what you've built your life on. Have you built your life on a solid foundation? Have you built your life on God? We have got to receive the Word of God. We've got to read the Word of God. We've got to research the Word of God. And we have to... Um, we have to remember it and reflect on it and we need to respond to it. You know, you could remember that on your hand if you want to do uh, those, those five hours to try to do that. The first thing is to receive it. In other words, we, we need to listen to it. Yes, uh, that's a little finger. And, and just on that point, if you, all you do is you come to church and you listen to it, uh, listen to the word of God, then to have a grip on something in life, if all you're trying to grip onto is with your little finger, Somebody can snatch whatever it is out of your hand very quickly, can't they? Yes? So if I'm trying to hold this piece of paper and I've just got that, you could easily take that. Yes? But if I'm not just listened to the Word of God, I've not just received it, but I then add to it reading the Word of God, I'm starting to get a stronger grip, aren't I? Yes? When you do that. When you, uh, when you research and you reflect on it, then, then you're getting a stronger grip even more, aren't you? When you memorize it, when you just, uh, you know, remember the Word of God, then you've got an even stronger grip. But then when you do it, you're putting all five into prayers, nobody, nobody can get it out of your hand is important for us. Amen? My, my plea to you today is build your life, not on Destiny Church, not on Jonathan, but on the Word of God. Amen? On the Word of God. Of God. I just want to ask you to follow me in a very simple prayer that I'm just going to pray. It's only a, a couple of sentences, but pray with you. You can pray it in your heart, you can pray it out loud, whatever you feel comfortable with today. But just repeat after me Dear God, I want to build my life on the rock, not on sand. I want a solid foundation of truth. I want to build my life on the Bible so I commit the next six weeks to learning how to do these things. Amen. Now, if you've never invited Jesus into your life, maybe you would want to just to pray this prayer. You can pray it in your heart. Uh, if you do pray it, we'd love for you to just to make a note of it on, our, on the Connect card. Um, for us or go tell somebody about it. it it is so important but we'd love to do it if you would like to invite Jesus into your life then repeat uh, 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 along with me uh, as I pray Jesus Christ I ask you to come into my life and make me what you want me to be save me I know I've done wrong and I ask you to forgive me I want to turn from those things. I want to go your way, not my way. And I want to learn to love you and trust you. And by faith now, I ask you to accept me into your family in your lovely and precious name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, I want to tell you there is rejoicing in heaven. It is, it is one of the greatest decisions that you can ever make. Please do tell someone. We're just going to... Uh, you're going to do this? Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Lord bless you.